Hello, students. This is English for academic and professional purposes. And for today's lesson, we will study about the nature of academic texts. Included in this lesson are the structure of academic texts, structuring the three part as A, and structuring MRAD. Let us use this image as an analogy. I believe everybody has a dream house. By just mentioning the word, you already have an idea or a clear picture of what it should look like and what materials are needed to build it. Some of the materials are so small and look useless on their own, but are actually vital to the entire building. Same is true in writing paragraphs and essays, most especially in writing research papers. These written outputs are composed of tiny parts that are essential to the whole structure. What makes up a paragraph, an essay, a research paper? The first vital part is the structuring paragraphs. In academic texts or academic writing, if you know how to identify the structure of the text, you can better understand and follow the flow of ideas in the text. But the paragraph itself has parts. These are the topic sentence, the supporting sentences, the concluding or transitional sentences. Let us look at this example. In this example, the topic sentence should be the starting sentence, and its function is to present the main point of the theme of the paragraph. On the other hand, the supporting sentences should support the main idea in the topic sentence. And the concluding sentence closes out the main idea by summing up the entire concept and ensures that the paragraph ends with a complete idea. In some cases, a transitional sentence is used to close out a paragraph and pave the way to the introduction of the next concept in the succeeding paragraph. Whatever your purpose is in writing a paragraph, there is always a corresponding method in developing that paragraph or what we call patterns of development. These are illustration or description, definition, classification, comparison and contrast, process, analogy, cause and effect, and narration. Let us look at the examples of each as we go along the paragraphs. And I wanted to pause this video and read the paragraphs for yourself to, and try to analyze what pattern of development is used in each paragraph. This is the first example. This is the second example. And this is the third example. I want you to pause this video and read the paragraphs for yourself and try to analyze what pattern of development is used in each paragraph. All three examples have a different way of presenting information through a paragraph. In the first paragraph about the decade, it started with the definition of a decade and how it differs from other time periods. The thesis statement is actually the question, when does a decade start and end? The second example, it shows a process paragraph in which the thesis statement enumerates the five steps of conceptualizing a topic. The third example illustrates the benefits of sports. Each paragraph has supporting details. The first one lists definitions, the second one describes each step, and the third one illustrates three concrete examples to back up its claim. Each paragraph also ends with a concluding sentence wrapping up each idea neatly, just in case a writer decides to write more about the topic. 
There are more ways in writing a paragraph. Here are the other examples. Please watch this video. First is narration. Here are the examples. Paragraph description. Here are the examples. Comparison and contrast. Here are the examples. And its purpose. So there you have the other examples of paragraph development. The following examples shown a while ago are examples of paragraphs and paragraph development. In writing academic texts, it is not enough to write in one paragraph only. There needs to be the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. This is what we call the three-part essay. Let us expound more. What is in a three-part essay? First is the introduction. The introduction has a purpose why it is written as the first paragraph. And the introduction should do the following. It should introduce the topic, and it is where the topic sentence is mostly found. It places the topic into context. It provides background information. It points out the aim of the text. It describes how the aim will be fulfilled. It provides a thesis statement for the text. It suggests what the findings are. It explains why the topic could be considered as interesting, and it catches the reader's interest. Aside from these functions, it also acts as transitional paragraph for the body. What is the body? The body is the main section of the essay, usually divided into subsections. Since the body is the most substantial part of the entire essay, it should do the following. It should research, or the research and the data are presented, the data is analyzed, and the data is discussed thoroughly. To sum it up, the body should present evidence to support the thesis statement. And lastly, the conclusion. The conclusion restates the thesis statement and wraps the entire essay. It should shed more light on how the evidence and the data presented in the body support the thesis. There is also an opportunity to evaluate the issue or topic at hand for further topics in the future. No new material is to be presented in the conclusion. Lastly, writers can suggest further studies or exploration of the topic at hand in the conclusion. And now, we are done with the three-part essay. Let us now proceed with structuring AMRAD. Perhaps this is not your first time hearing this term. In research, this is widely used. IMRED stands for Introduction, Methods, 
and materials, results, and discussion with a conclusion. This kind of structure is usually used for academic texts, mostly research papers. IMRAD aims to discuss the research topic at hand with the intention of explaining the topic and its intended purpose. Let us first discuss the letter I, or introduction. The introduction part contains the context of the study and addresses what the study seeks to investigate or what it will be about. It is presenting the topic in general compared to the indicated research questions. In this part, the writer must introduce the topic in a way that the readers can relate and in a context that they understand and then gradually focus into the topics backed up with the research. We might have also heard the term background of the study. How is it different from the introduction? The introduction aims to raise the reader's interest on the topic, while the background provides a more extensive knowledge about the topic. Let us now proceed to the methods. The methods and materials. This part describes how the research will be conducted. In other words, it explains how the aim of the research and research questions will be fulfilled and answered. This shows the methods used to collect data. It also shows the study design connected to the way the data will be collected. The method is the transition from the background to the application of the study. Let us now proceed with the results. From its name, it shows the results based on how they were collected in the methods or in the methods parts of the research. The presentation of the answer must also follow the order on how the questions were asked in the methods section. And in this section, it is recommended to use graphs, charts, to aid in the understanding of the data. However, in explaining the results, do not use the same figures to show in the data. Instead, expound it in words to guide the reader what needs to be observed. Also, in presenting the data, use captions to guide the reader what the data in the figure is all about. We are now in the discussion. After getting the results, analysis of the results must be made. The writer should remind the readers of the aim of the study and analyze and discuss the results, especially if they were significant in nature. To facilitate the discussion, the following guide questions can be used. What do the results mean? How does it relate or relate to the prior research? What are the relative similarities of differences from previous research to the current? And how did you, your chosen methods affect the results? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the study? How are the results important important to the future developments? What kind of research is needed in the field for the future? And finally, the conclusion. The conclusion is the end part of the study. The conclusion fulfills the aim of the entire study. It connects all the sections of the research coherently and to guide the reader on the focus of the research. In the conclusion part, the writer gives the implication of the study, meaning how will it be used or its contributions and may open another topic for research. And last but not the least, the abstract. We can see the summary of the research work and pinpoint every action done in the paper from introduction, method, method and materials, results, discussion, and conclusion. It is where we can see all of these. This is written in the abstract. 
So to sum up, let us discuss what we have learned. From this lesson, we have learned about the structure of academic text, the structure of an essay, or the three-part essay, the paragraph development, or the ways in developing paragraphs, and the IMRED structure, which means introduction, methods and materials, results and discussion with the conclusion. If you have further questions or clarifications, please don't hesitate to write in the comment section below. I hope to see you again in our le next lesson. You're always welcome. Thank you and goodbye.